Hello, students, and welcome to another episode of Storytime with Mr. Ritter. In today's episode, I'm going to read you another story about a character named Alexander. This is the fourth and the final book in the Alexander series, written by Judith Fiorst. This book is called Alexander, who's trying his best to be the best boy ever. This one is illustrated by Isidri Moniz, and he is drawing it in the style of Ray Cruz, who illustrated the first two books as well. Alexander, who's trying his best to be the best boy ever. Last night, somebody ate a whole box of jelly donuts and hid the empty donut box under the couch. I'm not saying who that somebody is, but this morning when I woke up, I had a belly ache. The good news is I get to stay home from school. The not so good news is it's Saturday. There is no school. The other not so good news is that my mom found the empty donut box under the couch and she's back in my room and she's shaking her finger at me and she's got her serious face on. And she's saying seriously, there are going to be consequences. Consequences are what you get when you do what you shouldn't have done. I hate consequences. What kind of fool eats a whole box of donuts? My brother Nick is asking me. I'm not answering. What kind of fool hides a donut box under the couch? My brother Anthony is asking me. I'm not answering. My mom says that my consequences are staying all day in my room with no video games or watching stuff on TV. Even if I'm thinking that video games and watching TV might help make a bellyache get better. I hate consequences. My dad says after breakfast, he'll take Anthony and Nick on a nice long bike ride. My mom says when they go biking, she is going to take a nice long bath and a nap. I ask if that means she won't be playing Go Fish or Bingo with me while I'm staying here in my room all day with a bellyache. My mom says, while I'm staying here in my room all day with a bellyache, I should think a lot about how I got that bellyache. But instead, I'm thinking I should have hid that donut box under my mattress or way back in my closet where moms might not look. And while I'm thinking of other cool places to hide an empty donut box, I have to go to the bathroom and throw up those donuts. Blech. My belly ache is going away, but my consequences are staying. And I'm stuck here all alone in my room, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking how good it feels when I'm eating donuts, and I'm thinking how yucky it feels when I'm throwing up, and I'm thinking how much I love eating jelly donuts, and I'm thinking how much I hate having consequences, and I'm thinking I hate those consequences much, much more than I love donuts. And so when my dad comes home with Nick and Anthony from their bike ride, and my mom is done with taking her bath and her nap, I tell them, I'm sorry I ate the donuts. And then I tell my mom and dad a whole new thought I thought while I was thinking, a whole new thought that sneaked into my head. Starting right now, I tell them, I am not getting into trouble anymore. I am only doing nice things starting right now, starting this very minute, I am being the best boy ever for the complete and entire rest of my life. Nick says, yeah, right. Lots of luck with that plan. Anthony says, forget about it. No way.
And then my dad says that if I try to be the best boy ever for just one week, counting the rest of today as my first day, and after that, we can see about me being the best boy ever for the complete and entire rest of my life. So beginning right this minute, I've stopped wishing my brother's bikes had gotten flat tires. I'm scraping some melted chocolate out of my drawer. I'm saying about a million pleases and thank yous. I'm picking up stuff I dropped all over the floor. At bedtime, my mom gives me kisses and hugs and tells me that my consequences are over. I tell her, no more consequences for me because I'm finished with trouble and I'm trying my best to be the best boy ever. On Sunday morning, I got out of bed very early. I almost, but I don't, turn on the TV. Everyone else is sound asleep, but I'm not waking them up. I'm walking on tiptoes, quiet as I can be. I'm not even bouncing my basketball, though I really want to see if I can beat Anthony's record of 96 bounces. I'm not bouncing my ball because I'm trying my best to be the best boy ever. Everyone's still asleep, and I'm still walking around on tiptoes, but it's lonesome being up all by yourself. It's boring being awake all by myself. I'm tired of being awake all by myself, and I'm thinking that if I went out the front door and rang the doorbell five, six, seven times, no one would be sleeping anymore. And I'm thinking that if I started practicing Sweet Home Alabama on my guitar, no one would be sleeping anymore. And I'm thinking that if I took all the books off the bookshelves in the living room and built a tower as high as I could reach, and then that tower accidentally came crashing down to the ground, no one would be sleeping anymore. I don't do any of that because I'm trying my best to be the best boy ever. On Monday, when I go to school, I remember to bring my homework, which means I'm not in trouble for forgetting it. I also don't talk in class when I'm not supposed to talk in class, even though not talking is hard to do, especially when I need to tell James that three tigers were born at the zoo, and also that he's smelling kind of smelly. <laughs> I raise my hand every time Mrs. Klimt asks us questions, like who is our first president, and how do you spell receive, and what's 47 take away 22, even if I don't always know the answer. And when she looks at me funny because I'm raising my hand all the time, she asks, Alexander, is something the matter with you? I say, I'm just trying to be the best boy ever. Mrs. Klimt is uh-huh, uh-huh-ing me like I'm telling her I'm trying to be Superman, but I don't care. I'm thinking, wait, you'll see. So then when she starts to carry this really gigantic plant upstairs to the teacher's lounge, I show her I'm nice by saying, I'll take it, let me. And I'm thinking Miss Klimt should not be looking as worried as she's looking when with just one little wobble, I take a hold of it. So I'm carrying the plant and I only trip once and I only bump into three people, maybe four. And I only break off some leaves and also some flowers. And when I get to the teacher's lounge and I set the plant too close to the edge of the table and it starts to fall off the table and toward the floor, I just in time catch it. 
And I'm thinking, Miss Klimt should be sounding a lot more thankful than she's sounding when she's thanking me for carrying that plant. On Tuesday, I keep on raising my hand, though I think Miss Klimt's getting grumpy. I remember to walk instead of run down the hall. At our soccer game, I don't start yelling, no fair, no fair, no fair. Though I'm absolutely positive I could have scored tons of points if I'd just been given a chance to kick the ball. But I never, not even once, was given a chance to kick the ball. And the other team won by about a thousand to zero, which, if I wasn't trying my best to be the best boy ever, I would have been yelling a lot of no fares about. At dinner, I use my napkin to wipe my mouth, not blow my nose. I even get up and put my plate in the sink. Look at that little angel, says Nick. He's such an angel, says Anthony, and they're flapping their arms, and I'm getting real mad, and I think I'd like to pour spaghetti sauce into Nick's lap and dump the whole bowl of spaghetti on Anthony's head, but even though they keep flapping and flapping while I get madder and madder, I make myself sit and finish my milk instead. It's not easy trying to be the best boy ever. I make my bed Wednesday morning without being told to. I brush all my teeth, not only in front, but behind. On the yellow school bus, while everyone else is shouting and shoving and teasing, who do you think is being gentle and kind? And who do you think is crawling around on the yucky school bus floor, helping Maisie look for her lost glasses? When I sit back in my seat, Zach, who's next to me, swings his feet harder and harder until, by mistake, he clonks me. And I'm thinking I really shouldn't. And then I'm thinking I really want to clonk him back. Because it hurts where he clonked me. Because I'm guessing it wasn't by mistake. And because Zach's swinging his feet again. And I really want to get him before he gets me. And I'm wondering... If I keep swinging my feet until, by mistake, I clunk Zach, am I trying my best to be the best boy ever? I swing my feet. On Thursday after school, I study guitar at Shelley's Music Shack. My mom comes with me and takes a guitar lesson too. We're working on a song we're playing together at the next Shelley's Music Shack concert. And while we're rehearsing our song, I'm kind of hopping and jumping around like rock stars do. And I think I'm hearing somebody saying I shouldn't. And I think I'm hearing somebody saying, watch out. But I keep hopping and jumping until I'm sure I hear someone shouting, stop Alexander. Except by then I've slipped, tripped, crashed, and kind of messed up Shelley's music shack. And I'm wondering if by accident I mess up Shelley's music shack, am I trying my best to be the best boy ever? Before I go to sleep, I decide that one maybe mistake and one not on purpose accident don't count as not trying. On Friday on the school bus, I help Maisie look for her glasses again. I sit as far as away as I can from Zach. When Andrew pokes me in the side with his very pointy elbow, I accidentally, by mistake, poke him back. But I don't tell Maisie I'm getting tired of helping her find her glasses and that maybe she ought to tape them to her face, even though, and I know this isn't nice, I'm absolutely 
bursting with wanting to tell her. In class, I try not to raise my hand when I'm not supposed to. Unless I'm completely positive, I really know the right answers to Miss Quimp's questions. But I still raise my hand too much because I sometimes don't know if my answers are right. Miss Klimp says I'm wearing her out and that she'll give me extra credit if I only would please stop raising my hand. And I'm wondering if I stop raising my hand and stop wearing Miss Klimt out, am I trying my best to be the best boy ever? I keep raising my hand. <laughs> Tonight, Nick and Anthony came into my room and start bouncing on my bed. They grab my arms and get me bouncing too. We're up, we're down, we're up, we're down. We're having so much fun doing what we're not supposed to do. What's going on in there? My mom is calling. Behave yourselves, boys, I'm hearing my dad say. And because I'm trying to be, well, I guess you know what I'm trying to be. I chase my brothers away and I stop bouncing. When I open my eyes on Saturday, the first thought I think is, I've done it. I've been the best boy ever for one whole week. But right after that, I'm thinking that trying to be the best boy ever was really hard. And right after that, I remember that now I'm supposed to start trying to be the best boy ever for the complete and entire rest of my life. The complete and entire rest of my life, I'm all of a sudden thinking, is a really long time. For the rest of my life, I won't get into trouble. For the rest of my life, I'll only do nice things. No clunking, no poking, no bouncing on beds, no messing up music shacks, no waking people up with doorbell rings. For the rest of my life, I'll be looking for Maisie's glasses, making sure the back of my teeth are clean, no yelling no fair, no matter how no fair they're being, no wishing for bad stuff to happen when brothers are mean. Just thinking about how hard it will be, I'm getting the kind of bellyache I get when I ate that whole box of jelly donuts. And I'm thinking, I'd much, much rather get a bellyache from donuts than a bellyache from being the best boy ever. And then I start thinking, I know a cool place, a really, really cool place. where a person could hide an empty donut box. The end. Have a great day, everybody. You can do this. Go for it.